Welcome everybody to Billy and Luis Yarborough Stadium, home of Solano Baseball. I'm Tristan Vector, joined by my broadcast partner Brian Nelson. The Mudcats are taking on the Rockhounds today, Brian, and a lot of familiar faces for Solano fans. Yeah, on both sides of the ball for the Mudcats and the Rockhounds, you'll see past players from Solano, present players for Solano, and on the mountain for the Mudcats is a future player for Solano in Tyler Pearsall. But now let's introduce the starting lineup for the visiting Solano Mudcats. Leading off will be second baseman Nolan Burr, current Solano Falcon player. In the two hole is center fielder Marcus Wise. In the three hole is Michael Driscoll, the left fielder. Jaden Lane, the first baseman, is batting cleanup. In the five hole is Nick Perez, the right fielder. Ian Acosta, the catcher, is batting sixth, followed by Josh Meekum, the DH, in the seven hole. Connor Cole, third baseman, is batting eighth. And rounding out the lineup is Brendan Natuzzi. And like I said, Tyler Pearsall will be on the mound. Now before we send it over to the Rockhound starting lineup, let's hear from McKenna Guerrero. Hey guys, McKenna Guerrero here reporting live from Billy and Louise Yarbrough Stadium. The sun is blurring out here in Fairfield, California, and the last time we saw you, the game ended due to darkness. Since then, the Rockhounds have came off two losses against the Prune Packers. Despite those outcomes, the Rockhounds are ready to bring the, the heat to the field today. Kellen Salampo will be the starting lineup for the Rockhounds now. Before we head out to the field, let's meet the rest of the Rockhounds starting lineup. Chase Grant, University of Nevada, Reno, right field. Jack Pridey, Solano College, third base. Hank Pankratz, Yuba College, second base. Jed Fagg, Yavapai College, first base. Cody Gregory, Solano College, designated hitter. Evan Facenda, Solano College, left field. Kellen Salampa, University of Pennsylvania, pitcher. Welcome back, just about, get, just about ready for the first pitch in this game from the Mudcat or the Rockhounds rather to the Mudcats. Nolan Burr will be leading off. Yeah, he'll be facing Kellen Salampa, who this season in summer league Mudcats. has Second pitched 15 innings Nolan in Burr. one start and six appearances, 13 hits allowed and six walks for a 1.26 whip, nine strikeouts in those 15 innings. He's given up six runs, but only one of them have been earned. So let's see if the defense can be solid behind Salampa. First pitch on the outside corner for a strike. And he'll be facing his teammate from last year, and I think that's a fun kind of dynamic that this game has with so many Solano players on both sides. Swing and a foul tip, 0-2. Quickly ahead is Kellen Salampa. And Burr, the freshman out of Santa Cruz, going to sophomore season for the Falcons. Last year he batted 214, 9 for 14. 42, only one extra base hit, but that one extra base hit was a homer. And the 0-2 pitch way outside, one and two. And Salampa so far in summer has done a lot better job of controlling his stuff than he did in the regular season for the Falcons. One, two pitch inside and it hit him. Breaking ball comes in too far. If you're gonna get hit by a pitch, a breaking ball inside would definitely be the one to be hit by. Up next, yeah, fastballs to the leg don't feel very good. <laughs> That'll bring up Marcus Wise, center fielder today for the Mudcats. Wise is a junior at Cal State East Bay, playing center field today. First pitch from Salonpa, low, ball one. He has led the team in steals the last two seasons he's played for Cal State East Bay with 17 apiece in both his sophomore and freshman campaigns. Throw over to first. That's not in time as Marcus Wise, if he gets on base, definitely a threat to steal, as is Nolan Burr, as you see the lead he takes at first base. And Burr is taking off. Wise fouls the pitch off, however. Yeah, maybe a hit and run, trying to get the runner in motion, try and maybe poke it the other way, get a first and third situation with no outs. Aggressive early on for the Mudcats. And the 1-1 one -one offering swung on and fouled off again. Yeah, Burr is dancing over there at first base, trying to draw the attention of Salampa. Maybe get his concentration more at the runner at first, and maybe that will get Wise a better plate opportunity to maybe take a couple pitches, maybe draw a walk to get his speed on the base pass. But 
Slop has done a great job of staying in command of his stuff, jumping ahead one and two. And the one-two pitch. Low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. That's something you'll see all day from catcher Dawson Baca. Really a tall catcher, but a very athletic guy behind the plate to block pitches that are low in the dirt. And if Salampa's a little wild like he's been in the past, Baca may have an active afternoon. Pitch was high and outside. Now it's a full count. And that's exactly what I was talking about of Salampa has a tendency to walk some people like he did in a BBC play. 3-2 pitch, swung on a bounce right back up the middle. Grabbed at second, flipped to second one. The relay to first is not in time, but a heck of a play over there at second base by Hank Pankratz. Yeah, that's the flashiest uh, field of choice you can possibly ask for your second baseman. Hit right back up the box for wise and... Pancras did a great job of fielding that and shoveling it off to Webster at short. He had to field that one backhand and make the flip with his glove. That was a phenomenal play right there. Yeah, and if Wise wasn't such a speedy guy, that could have potentially been the second great double play we've seen so far in the summer league action. Swing it a chopper right back in front of home. This is going to roll foul. I thought it hit Michael Driscoll. Yeah, and I think it's very lucky that Driscoll didn't get hit while... He was running towards first because, of course, if he would have been hit by the ball, he would have been out. And a good heads-up play by Baco to let the ball dribble foul and get Salampa a, a chance to get an out without advancing the runner. So another familiar face for Solano fans, Michael Driscoll. Yeah, at a Will Seawood High School last year. About a 293, 22 of 75. Oh, one pitch swung on and shot into shallow right, shallow right field. That's going to drop. On his way to third is wise. He will get there easily. And Single for Driscoll. So that's what Wise tried to do in his at-bat with Burr at first. Driscoll able to just poke it into right field, and it was hit so meekly that the speed of Wise easily took third base, and all uh, Grant could do in right field was throw it to the cutoff man. That will bring up the cleanup hitter, Jaden Lane. First pitch right down the middle for a strike. Jane Lane was a redshirt freshman out of Benicia last year with his four-year school. Pitch low for a ball. But his career in high school, he was 21 of 60 with nine extra base hits, three home runs, 15 RBI. So a little bit of pop in this bat from the first baseman batting cleanup. And that's why he's batting cleanup, yeah. <laughs> presumably. Swings and misses at that pitch, one and two. Yeah, definitely... The shorter, stockier build. Expect a lot of power from the hit from the base. Basically, a, a typical first base build. First base slash catcher. That's what I expect. Just looking at him. Swing and a miss. Beautiful breaking ball from Salonpa. He strikes out. Yeah. So good job of Salonpa not letting the pressure of a runner at third with less than two outs get to him. All Lane had to do was really put it in play, and he could potentially have scored wise, but. Salampa did a great job of missing the barrel of Lane on multiple occasions. So that'll bring up the right fielder, Nick Perez. And Perez is a former Falcon as well. Pitch outside corner and low, but it's in there for a strike. Three years ago, he had a stellar campaign for the Falcons. Batted 318, 35 for 110. 10 doubles, two triples, and a homer, and 18 RBIs. 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Beautiful breaking ball from Kellen Salampa. Yeah, Salampa's breaking stuff is working very well early, aside from hitting Nolan Burr with uh, the 1-2 pitch. Uh, Salampa's breaking ball has done an excellent job of missing the barrel of these Mudcat batters. 0-2 pitch, brings the breaking ball back, and Perez decides to hold off on it. And that's the trust I was talking about with a catcher like Baco to throw that breaking ball in the dirt and trust that your catcher will block it with a runner at third and two outs. Your catcher needs to block those type go. of pitches. Runner going, swinging a bouncer over to short. And the high throw is still in time to get him at first. Garland Webster makes the play. Nice play by Jed Fagg at first base. Yep. That'll end the top of the first 0-0 zero, zero as we head to the bottom. I'm Chase Grant. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. <laughs>
Welcome back. Bottom of the first inning, Rockhounds on their way to the plate. It's going to be Chase Grant, Joey Dodson, and Jack Pridey to start off the ball game for the Rockhounds. Yeah, and on the mound, though, is a future Falcon for all you Falcon fans watching the Salon College Sports Network. Tyler Pearsall recently graduated from Wilsey Wood High School, teammates with Michael Driscoll. His high school stats... Don't let the record fool you. 4 and 10, 3.81 ERA, but 75 innings pitch, 82 hits allowed, 31 walks with 40 Ks, and a save on his record. And he'll get the start here against the Rockhounds in his future home ballpark. Well, you can already tell. I mean, you look at the 4 and 10 Tekkard, but 381 is a solid ERA, especially in high school baseball where runs are just scored so often because of uh, – Mistakes in the field that aren't even necessarily counted as errors, like a fielder just misjudging a ball and, and different things that won't happen as often here. So a 381 ERA shows you that he's a solid pitcher regardless of a 4-10 and record. This is definitely going to be a big test for him. A lot of solid community college experience he's going to be going up against. Chase Grant, Joey Dotson, Hank Pankratz, and just the top of the order are two-year community college players that are transferring to the four-year level. So a big test here for Pearsall. And his first pitch, high, ball one. And he'll be facing Chase Grant, who this summer is 15 for 46, four doubles, eight RBI, six runs for the right fielder. Swinging a bouncing ball right back up the middle. That's a base hit. Chase Grant with a solid single on the second pitch. Yeah, I've just been so impressed with Chase Grant in the limited time we've seen him. He just has a pure, smooth swing from the left side, and it doesn't always seem like the lefties always have the prettiest swings. You just think of Ken Griffey Jr. Chase Grant just has a simple, easy swing. He finds the gaps in right center field a lot, and that time just poked it right back up the middle. That'll bring up Joey Dodson, center fielder, very familiar face for Falcons fans. Maybe look for Dotson to bunt. And he shows bunt, pulls it back. It's in there for a strike, though. Yeah, I think that's just ingrained in his DNA as a baseball player after coming two years through the program here at Solano Community College. This summer, he is 14 for 48, five RBIs, 11 runs scored. And he'll be batting in the two-hole trying to advance the runner at first. A very speedy Chase Grant. 0-1 pitch. He's not showing bunt this time. The ball is high, so perhaps he was showing bunt but didn't intend to on that first pitch. Yeah, with Grant at first, you have a ton of options here with Dodson. If you trust his back control, there's a big gap in the right side of the infield, and maybe you call a straight steal with Grant. That pitch will actually throw over to first, rather, was late. Yeah, they are very aware of Grant's speediness. In the last game we had at STSN, he had two steals. Pearsall checking the runner at first. 1-1 one, one pitch. Grant's going. And hesitating for a second before throwing was Acosta, and that was the big difference right there between catching him and not getting him. Yeah, just a double clutch. It, the speed of Grant ha puts pressure on a catcher, even an experienced catcher like Ian Acosta, who is at the four-year level. Grant got a great jump, and the thing is Pearsall missed his location as well. Acosta set up on the outside. The pitch was in. He had to reach across his body. He didn't get the no, best yeah, grip. The and that pitch is inside. Good eye from Joey Dodson. That pitch was close. Three and one now. Dodson ahead of the count. Yeah. Dodson's drawn four walks so far this summer. See if he can't draw his fifth walk and put two runners on for Jack Pridey. 3-1 pitch. In there for a strike. Full count. So full count to Dotson. We'll see what Pearsall delivers. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Good job by Joey Dotson right there. You have a full count, two strikes. You have to protect. He takes that inside-out swing because that's not the pitch he wants to swing at. That's the first time you see Pearsall's breaking ball, and he just did a great job of staying back on it and just fouling off to stay alive. 3-2. and two. You definitely don't want to give the umpire the chance to call you out. Pitch way up and in. Ball four, good at bat from Joey Dodson. And see, it pays off the next pitch. is an easy take for Dodson. 
and he just trots down to first, and now a lot of speed on the base pass with Grant and Dodson for Jack Pridey. So Jack Pridey, another Falcon familiar. And Hank Pankratz on deck. Team lead four home runs this summer. Pitch is high. Yeah, we talked about that before the game started. Two home runs throughout the season, but he has four already here in the summer. Perhaps he's been working on an uppercut swing. Maybe it's just osmosis being around all the power hitters that the uh, the Rockhounds feature, like Tyler Stover. 1-0 pitch. High again, 2-0. But Pearsall, very erratic, and I think this is a veteran move from Ian Acosta. Go talk to his pitcher, who's been consistently up in the zone, try and calm his mechanics down. It just shows the leadership Ian Acosta showed here at Solano Community College for two years, being the catcher in both 2013, 14, and 14, 15 seasons. Took his time as well. He was not brash about that little trip to the mound a lot of times they'll just go out there and just be like you know hey calm down or whatever and then just turn right around but he had some detailed instructions for Tyler Pearsall yeah that just wasn't show just be like hey pitch better it wasn't that kind of conversation <laughs> 2-0 pitch swung on and shot to short picked up there thrown to second one relay to first is not going to be in time that is a fielder's choice nice play over there at short by Natu Natuzzi who makes the backhand stop and flips it to Burr. Yeah, but he kind of took his time to get to the ball, and that really cost him the chance at the double play. <coughs> Pridey has enough speed to beat that out just because he trotted over there, but then he stopped to backhand the ball, didn't really aggressively go after it, but he got the one sure out. Pearsall had yet to retire a batter, so get one out on the board and hope he can get this double play. First pitch to Pankratz is high. Runners at the corners with just one out. Great chance for the cleanup hitter, Hank Pankratz. Pankratz is hitting nearly 400, 19 for 51. Three doubles, three home runs, and 13 RBIs. Numbers you like to see out of your cleanup hitter. 1-0 pitch. Swung on a shot deep into right. Backtracking and making the catch is Perez. Runner will tag and score. RBI, sacrifice fly for Hank Pankratz. Yeah, just good job of putting the bat on the ball. The Mugcast can execute that same situation in the top of the first with a runner at third base with one out. But Pankratz just barrels up the ball, sends it into right field. The right fielder Perez didn't get a great jump on the ball. It was kind of turning around. No way you could get the speedy grant tagging. So the Rockhounds get the first run of the ball game. And that will bring up Garland Webster. Pitch just misses for a ball on the outside. Webster doesn't have as many as bats as his teammates, 10 for 26, but has five extra base hits in those 10 hits with four doubles and one home run. And now the 1-0 from Pearsall. Swung on and popped foul right behind home. And Webster here in a similar situation as Dodson was with a runner at first and a big hole on the right side of the infield. And now the 1-1 from Pearsall bounces in. Nice block by Acosta. And Pearsall really has yet to really command the strike zone so far in this ball game. He's going to have to fix that quickly if he wants to keep the Mudcats in this ball game. Throw over to first. That one considerably closer than the other throws we've seen to first so yeah. far today, but not in time to get Pridey. Yeah, that was a pretty good pickoff move for a righty. It was a quick release, and it caught Pridey off guard, but Pridey able to get back in time. And a swing and a foul back again by Webster, 2-2. Two and two. So Pearsall has a pitch to play with, try and strike out Webster, who has five strikeouts in his 26 at-bats. Webster checking with Coach over at third. But really, just watching Garland through his two years, the two situations where I think he's really dangerous is first pitch and with two strikes. 
2-2 pitch. Runner going. Pitch is high. Throw down to second. Not in time. Close play over at first. But Jack Pridey with the steal. I think that's a low-risk kind of attempt, and I like that kind of aggression with the 2-2 count. If the pitch is – if there's going to be a throw down, that means it's a ball, so it's not going to be the best pitch for Acosta to throw off of. And if it is a strike, then hopefully Webster hits it and you're on the run. Pierzal checks the runner at second. Full count pitch. Swung on a shot high in the air center field. Not too deep. Wise is under it. And he makes the catch. It's funny that, that will retire the side. <laughs> it's funny that Friday didn't run a 3-2-2 two, two, two out, but he runs 2-2 two, two with two out. So just, just a funny kind of situation to end the inning. Indeed. That will end the first inning. After one, the Rockhounds lead the Mudcats one to nothing. Hi, I'm Cody Gregory, and thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Top of the second inning, Mudcats trailing for the first time this game. It's one nothing Rockhounds that give the lead to Kellen Salonpa, who's going to face the six, seven, eight hitters for the Mudcats: Acosta, Meckham, and Cole. And the first offering to Acosta in there for a strike. Acosta in his two years at Solano bad 247 in his career, but his sophomore campaign was a lot better than his freshman offensively. In his sophomore year, batted 310 with a 330 on base percentage and slugged 437. 0 1 pitch outside, 1 and 1. And for your catcher to hit two home runs and drive in 27 RBIs, this definitely was a key for the Falcons when they made the playoffs two years ago, was Acosta's presence in the lineup and behind the dish. 1 1 pitch, swung on and bounced over to short. Webster get, gets the ball and throws high again. Fag able to corral that one. Yeah, he's just giving the first baseman a little workout, just testing his hops <laughs> just for the pickup basketball team after the season's over, just making sure that Jed has the hops that's necessary to, you know, get the, the Rockhounds pickup basketball team a victory. He's going to be looking for a lob. He wants to make sure he yeah. can make the rim. Yeah, Garland must have played point guard at RMEO. First pitch swung on and fouled by Josh Meckham, the DH. Yeah, Meekum played sparingly in his one season at Solano. Was really a role player. Seven for 35, one triple, four RBIs, eight runs scored. And he has since moved on to Muscle Shores. Meekum College. with a bouncer to second. Picked up by Pankratz and thrown to first. And so quick grounders for Solanpa. And that's what you like to see when you, your team scores your run. You want that shutdown inning, put up a zero, get your offense back at the plate with six, seven, eight coming up. And Salonpa's game plan, you can already tell, is to induce as many ground balls as he possibly can. Already four of his five outs have come off the grounders. Not a big strikeout pitcher right now. Yeah, he just wants to keep locating low. Connor Cole fouls that one off one and one. Connor Cole went 21 for 95, two doubles, seven RBIs, 11 runs scored, struck out 18 times and walked 14 times at his college in his freshman year. That college being College of Siskiyous. So he'll be back for the... We like to joke it's called the Huskies because in our first volleyball game, we played Siskiyous and we didn't know their ma mascot. And Chelsea Williams, uh, alum of SCSN, 
one one pitch fouled off. Assumed that they were the Huskies for some reason. Didn't didn't fact check. She was just like, it's the Huskies. So he went the entire game calling them the Siskiyous Huskies, and that's not their mascot. And what was it? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I can't even remember. We corrected it, but forever in my mind, they'll be the Siskiyous Huskies. One two pitch, swung on and missed. Beautiful breaking ball by Kellen Salonpa. Almost as beautiful as that story, Brian. End of the top of the first, it's still one nothing Rockhounds. Hi, I'm Jed Thag. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. <laughs> Bottom of the second here in hot Fairfield, California. Not really getting that breeze that we normally get today. Yeah, the mud cats are definitely that dry type of mud. It's not that that wet mud that that catfish like. Jed Fag will lead it off. Six, seven, eight for the Rockhounds, just like the six, seven, eight came up for the mud cats last inning. Jed Fagg on the summer season is 10 for 35. Two doubles, five runs driven in, six runs scored. First pitch he takes is a ball, 1-0. And, oh. and again, Pearsall out of the strike zone. Fagg has to be patient, realize Pearsall hasn't been around the strike zone too much. So we're going to bounce her high chop over to third, thrown over to first just in time. Good job by Connor Cole to wait on that bounce. Fagg's retired, 1-0. Oh. Yeah, Cole looked like he had a little trouble with exchange, but with that high chopper, had plenty of time to just gather himself and made a strong throw to get Fag for the first out. That'll bring up the DH, Cody Gregory. Gregory's had a nice summer so far, hitting just under 330, 9 for 28, three doubles, six RBIs. First pitch to Gregory outside for a ball. And the 1-0 pitch inside. Oh, it hit him. Just barely clipped Gregory. He'll take his base for the first run runner of the inning. And this game has kind of mirrored each other very similarly with the 6-7-8 hitters hitting in the second yeah, inning. The and now Dawson each Bongo. team has a hit by pitch. There's a lot of Lots eeriness of ground going balls. on. Yeah, I feel like this is a Friday the 13th type of game <laughs> where there's just going to be a lot of oddities that are – Kind of coincidences, but you kind of want to explain them just from bad luck. Dawson Baco swings and misses. Well, actually foul tips that first pitch 0-1. And, and Baco's struggled offensively. We talked about how good he's been behind the plate, but uh, with the bat in his hand in the batter's box, one for 20, one run scored, five strikeouts. And you expect that kind of transition coming straight out of high school, facing... Well, he'll be facing another guy straight out of high school, but predominantly facing experienced pitchers. Pitch way inside. Dawson does a great job to avoid being hit right there as that pitch was labeled right for his head. He dodges it, and the runner advances to second on the wild pitch. Well, you call that little alarm clock fastball because that will wake you up. Because <laughs> Baco had a duck out of the way of that one. Good thing is those uh, catcher's reflexes. 1-1 one, one pitch from Pearsall. Swung on and bounced right through the right side. And it takes a hop off the grass. Heading home and scoring is Cody Gregory. Very aggressive call by Andrew Ayers. 
waving home Cody Gregory from second base, but it definitely paid off. I think that you mentioned it during the call. It kicked off the grass a little bit, and that kind of slowed down the momentum of the ball. So the right fielder had a very tough throw to make because Gregory picked up his third base coach, Andrew Ayers, all the way and was hustling around third and scored. Yeah, definitely Perez was not expecting that ball to, to hit off the lip of the grass and inexplicably go airborne. Yeah. First pitch to Facenda swung on a shot the right side. That's a fair ball. Facenda on his way to second. Heading to third is Baco. He's going to be sent home and he will score. Facenda is going to go into third with a stand up triple off the first base bag. And what a time for Evan Facenda to get his first extra base hit of the summer. A great liner right over the first base bag. And with the slice that that ball hit, it went right into the corner. And Baco scored easily. An uh, easy triple for Evan Facenda. That'll bring up Chase Grant, top of the order, coming back up. I er, almost did it again. Yeah. Rockhounds on top, 3 nothing. At least they're not the Huskies. Pitch swung on and flied in the air to left. This is pretty shallow. Facenda might try. He's going to try and tag. Throw coming home. Cut off. He will score. And that was just perfect timing from Evan Facenda. He left the bag right as the ball entered the glove of the left fielder. And with his hustle, and Facenda put on his PF flyers and scored <laughs> for the fourth run of the ball game. Great job by Chase Grant, just like Hank Pankratz, on getting the ball in the air with the runner on third and less than two outs. And it's 4 nothing now, Rockhounds. First pitch to Dodson's inside after Dodson drew a walk his first time up. And so Pearsall having a rough go of it here his first time at Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Pitch in there for a strike, one and one. One one pitch to Dotson, way inside. These foul, er, <laughs> God, <laughs> these Rockhounds hitters are quick with those reflexes. He should have been hit by that one. Yeah, definitely. They had to get, get, get. I don't even know the word anymore. I'll, I'm just giving up. <laughs> Swinging a bouncer to short. Picked up on a hop by Natuzzi. Throw to first. Got him. Nice play. That'll end the second inning, but three runs from the Rockhounds. It's 4 nothing. inning of play here at Solano. Mudcats coming back up and looking for some way to solve Kellen Solan, but they have not been able to score yet. Only one hit. The bottom of the lineup, well, the last hitter in the lineup, Brandon Natuzzi, will lead it off. Then it'll go back over to Burr and Wise. Natuzzi out of Willamette University in Oregon. First pitch, swung on and bounced right back to the mound. Good reflexes from Solan, but that's the third play we've seen on the Rockhounds with great reflexes today. Yeah, Salampo with the go-go gadget glove and <laughs> use a little extendo action to snag that ball out of midair and get Natuzzi easily. I'm loving all the references today. Back to the top of the order for the Mudcats. Can you tell someone I'm watching too much Nolan TV? Burr. <laughs> Nolan Burr, the only hitter for the Mudcats to reach without getting a hit. He was hit by a pitch. 
in the first at bat this game. First pitch in there for a strike. And I think not surprisingly, it was on the first breaking ball that Salampa offered. But after that, Salampa's done a great job of controlling his breaking stuff low in the zone. And there's another one hit right back Ooh. at him. Oh, he caught it. Kellen Salampa. Reflexes of a cat. Man, I can't believe he caught that. And he was the only one to make that play because Bird did a great job of hitting it right back up the box. And Pankratz or Webster would have to make a spectacular play to get the speedy lefty out of the box. And Slampa just grabbed it out of midair again. I can't believe he held on to that. I mean, it's one thing to get your glove onto it, but he snow coned it and his legs kind of buckled underneath each other as he fell. That was a phenomenal play. If you're Marcus Wise, don't hit it back up the middle. <laughs> Swinging a high fly ball deep into right, going back on it and making the catch is Chase Grant. One, two, three inning. Great job by Kellen Salonpa. And we head to the bottom of the third now. Rockhound's still up 4 nothing. Bottom of the third, Pridey, Pankratz, and Webster, the 3-4-5 hitters for the Rockhounds coming up. 4 nothing lead. Rockhounds with the right hitters coming up to try and extend that. Yeah, the six batters come up. First last. pitch, high drive, right center field. Nicely played by Nick Perez. One gone. So Pridey aggressive swinging on that one. He reached his first at bat on that dribbler to shortstop that they were unable to turn to and there he swings at the first pitch and flies out pretty easily for the first out. Hank Pankratz with the RBI sack flies first time up. At his 14th RBI. Pitch low ball one. Pankratz typically we've seen him in the two hole in both games that we've covered here at SCSN, but here batting cleanup. 1-0 pitch, outside corner for a strike. Seems like about the same location, but that one is a strike. 1-1. One one. Sometimes you just need repetition to just kind of feel out your strike zone, so maybe he liked that one a little bit better. 1-1 one, one pitch, outside 2-1. And, and at least Pearsall's in the head of the umpire to make him think about these, and I think Pearsall really needs the benefit of the doubt because he's been kind of erratic. 2-1 pitch, swung on a shot, quickly dropping. Nice sliding catch made in center by Wise. Yeah, that was a wise decision to slide and <laughs> with the sliding backhand. And Pancras just kind of stuck the bat out there. And I thought that definitely was going to fall short of the center fielder. But we talked about Wise's speed on the base pass. That's the benefit of having a speedy center fielder. They have great range. And you always want one of your fastest, if not your fastest player, to be in center field because of the distance that they have to cover at that position. Yeah, you look at Dotson for the <coughs> Rockhounds, Manning center field, very similar type of player speed-wise. Garland Webster now, no one on two outs. First pitch is a ball. Webster in his first at-bat flew out to center field as well. Pitch outside 2-0. and So really good hitters count here for Webster. Maybe look to for something to drive. Two outs, why not go for maybe swing for the fences a little bit. 
And a 2-0 pitch swung on him. Bounced to third. Takes a weird hop right over Connor Cole's glove. It's a little home cooking from Billy and Louise Yarborough Stadium. Getting another tricky hop. We saw that hop that the Dawson Bacco single took in the second Dawson inning. And there, Carlin Webster's slow chopper to third base took a weird hop and it just went right over the glove of third baseman Connor Cole. The problem for Connor Cole on that play is you always want to rush to get in front of the ball so that your body is behind your glove. If you miss it with the glove like that one got, does, you can keep it in front of you and still make the play. Pitch high, snap throw to first, not in time. Heads up, though, by Ian Acosta. Yeah, can you tell he's a Solano catcher with the snap throw over mm. to first? They all seem to have that one in the yeah. repertoire. That definitely looks familiar for you Falcon fans. Pearsall checks the runner at first. And throws over. And it's a balk. Garland Webster will head over to second base. Too bad Dawson Baco wasn't on the base path. That's my contribution to that. <laughs> <laughs> the wise decision to slide in center yeah. and now the Bach and Baco. 1-0 pitch in there for a strike on Fag. It's 1-1. One and, one. and here Jed Fag has a great opportunity to have the third straight inning to have a run come across for the Rockhounds. Piers all now. 1-1 one, one pitch. In there for a strike. Fag thought it was a little low. One and two. It's a great hitter's count, excuse me, pitcher's count here for Pearsall. Has three pitches to play with to try to strike out Fag. One, two pitch. High again, two and two. Fag does have ten strikeouts on the summer season so far. One of the few raw counts in double figures in terms of strikeouts. And now the 2-2 pitch. High again. Pearsall has been way up on the strike zone. And so you'd expect Garland Webster to be running here. 3-2, two, two out. So anything put in play should score Webster from second. 3-2 pitch. Outside, ball four. So good eye from Jed Fag to work it from a 1-2 count all the way to a walk. That will bring Cody Gregory up who got hit by a pitch his first at bat and scored. And it could also keep the streak alive. Both games we've broadcasted on SCSN, Gregory's gotten an RBI in both games. So you're saying I should take credit. <laughs> Pitch outside corner for a strike. He always plays better when he can hear me behind him. Is that what well, you're saying? Well, you weren't here the first game we did. It was myself, Jake Poff, Zach Poff. I'm giving myself credit. That's, that's exactly okay. what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. I got you. 0 oh, 1 pitch swing and a miss. 0 oh, 2. Gregory gives himself <laughs> a look of disapproval. <laughs> Maybe the disapproval is hearing us take credit for his success. <laughs> Either way, he was very animated about that one. Digging back in now. And time called. No, it was a, another another block called. He came set and he gave a little flinch. And Pearsall knew it. As soon as they called it, he just kind of gave a nonverbal suggestion that, man, I can't believe I just balked for the second time this inning. Now two runners in scoring position for Cody Gregory with two outs. And if you're Pearsall, you still just need that one strike. you got to focus on that as the pitch is outside one and two. Regardless of those back-to-back -back box, they don't hurt you if you, don't get, or if you can get this hitter out. He just needs that next strike. And if you're Gregory, you have to have a memory of Fags at bat prior when it went one-two to a walk. 1-2 pitch, swung on end, fouled back. Good job by Gregory to stay alive. Yeah, these raw count hitters have done a great job of staying alive in two strike counts, taking the balls that are easy to take and then fighting off the ones that are borderline. So we'll do the 1-2 pitch again. Outside, 2-2. Two 
and everybody kind of paused to see if the umpire thought maybe that caught the outside corner, but looked at it and thought it was yet another ball from Pearsall. Two two pitch, way inside, full count. Almost try to wear that one, as he didn't exactly try to get away out of that breaking ball. No, he just turned his back towards the ball. Great at bat so far by Cody Gregory, though. Seventh pitch of the at bat, three two, swing and a very late miss. Cody Gregory very disappointed as he heads back to the dugout. That'll end three innings of play here at Solano. Rockhounds on top, four nothing. Robbie Rogers, Rock Hounds pitching coach. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. <laughs>back here in the top of the fourth inning Rockhounds on top for nothing it's gonna be Driscoll Lane and Perez for the Mudcats eight straight retired by Kellen Salanpa yeah, last person to reach base <coughs> via a hit the only person to get a hit so far has been Michael Driscoll who blooped one into shallow right field first pitch to him he bloops it again to shallow right field and Grant coming on makes a diving catch Chase Grant was ready. He moved in from where he had been the last time, and that was virtually the same swing. Great play. Yeah, excellent play to <coughs> full <coughs> extension from Grant, and that was the only way to make that play. That was no showboating type of dive. That was a I need a dive to catch this ball, and he did exactly that. High fly ball, shallow. The shortstop Webster calls it and makes the catch. So two pitches, two outs. And Kellen Salampa is not working by the hour, folks. Ten straight retired from Kellen Salampa. He is about to finish off his third straight three-up, three-down inning if he can get Nick Perez. 16, Nick Perez. And he grounded out to shortstop to end the first. First pitch in there for a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. We've seen a lot of excellent defensive plays all around for Salampa's numbers. Pitch outside. Yeah, we saw that play up the middle by Pankratz. On the other side, we saw Wise and now Grant. I was going to say, he's allowed six runs, only one earned, so his defense has not held up in the past. Swing and a miss, one and two. And then on top of all those great defensive plays, we saw himself make back-to-back -back plays. Hit right back at him last inning. 1-2 pitch. Great breaking ball. Good job, though, by Perez to hold off on it. Yeah, a lot of late life on that curveball, and Perez did a great job of holding up. That was a very tempting pitch for a lefty-lefty matchup. 2-2 two -two pitch. Low, full count. So, again, great patience from Perez <laughs> working a full count to Salampa, especially after two outs on two pitches to work a full count, get his pitch count to... A normal range. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and flied again. High in the air. Right center. Grant calls it off and makes the catch. A 1-2-3 inning on just eight pitches for Kellen Salonpa. We're on our way to the bottom of the fourth. 4-0 Four Rockhounds. Hi, my name is Dustin Lebee. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff. That's me.
at solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. Bottom of the fourth inning. Rock Hounds just about to come up on top 4 nothing, And really, even though their offense has been good so far, their defense is the story right now. Yeah, definitely providing Salampa a lot of support and has allowed the confidence for Salampa to retire 11 straight batters. He's done an excellent job of shutting down the Mudcat offense. And the Rock Hound offense has done what they've done all summer long, provided a good offensive punch. And I think that's something when you look up and down their lineup, they have so many good offensive players that whatever lineup they throw out there, there's a good six to seven offensive threats in the lineup any given day. And when you have up and down the lineup offensive threats, the pitcher can't take a break at all and say, oh, this is an easy out. And it just puts a lot of stress on the arm of the starting pitcher and the bullpen. And you look at what the bottom of the lineup has done today. Gregory reached on a hit by pitch. Baco has an RBI single. <laughs> <laughs> and Evan Facenda has an RBI triple. So you look at the bottom of the lineup right there, they're on base three out of four times with two runs batted in out of the four. And that just shows the depth of the lineup. When Evan Facenda can hit ninth, that is a deep lineup. 0-1 pitch on Baco. Way inside. And really, Facenda is acting like a second leadoff man with his high on base percentage and his ability to get the ball in play. So that's why he's hitting ninth instead of Three or one one is outside for a ball. So to Baco, who you would typically imagine your worst hitter as your number nine hitter, as Baco only has two hits now <coughs> this summer. Two one pitch to Baco is low. Three and one. Baco's done a great job at the plate here today with that RBI single and scoring and is in commanding control with the three one count. And the three one. And he misses, ball four. Bottom of the lineup has reached base four times now out of five trips to the plate. We'll see if Facenda can't make it five for six. Seven, Evan Biggest hit of the game so far, his only extra base hit for any team with that RBI triple off the first base bag. He went oppo on it. Shows butt, pulls it back, it's a ball. <clears throat> and again, those Falcon tendencies, they're hard to forget. Here with no outs, runner at first. Facenda willing to give up his at-bat to advance the runner. 1-0 pitch, swung on and bounced off of his bat and then foul. Vicenda digs back in. Pearsall checks the runner at first. And the 1-1 pitch. Inside corner. Way inside it looked like on that one, but it's a strike, one and two. Yeah, Vicenda just checking with the umpire, make sure he knows exactly where that was in the strike zone, so he knows to protect here now with two strikes. Throw over to first. Definitely not in time. Yeah, but he definitely has an interesting pickoff move where he it's very hard to time it. It's, he tries to catch you off guard rather than have the quickest move. 1-2 pitch, swung on and fouled back. I mean, he executes the pickoff at an orthodox time, so he tries to catch the runner as he's leading towards second base, maybe catch him... Uh, while he's stepping towards second base, and that way it's harder to dive back into the bag. You have to pick anybody off, but it's definitely an interesting move here from Pearsall. And with the catcher at first, you don't expect him to go anywhere. 1-2 pitch. Swung on and flied. Foul territory to the right side. That's going to drop. Still 1-2. and two. Evan Facenda stays alive. Yeah, and that's <coughs> a tough play for any first baseman to make. 
And Lane, not exactly the most fleet of foot over at first base. Pierzal steps back. <coughs> so again, another rock hound hitter. One and he throws it back over to first. Battling with two strikes, trying to stay alive. Real long at bat. The rock hounds have been fighting this whole game, and Pierzal's pitch count is getting up there. And yet there's no activity in the Mudcats bullpen. 1-2 pitch. Runner going. Swing a line drive to right. This is going to be caught quickly. Baco has to get back. And he's in time to avoid being doubled off. Yeah, that's just good base running from Baco. Obviously got the hit and run sign, but picked up his third base coach who saw up that order, Facenda right two, hit a Chase line drive Grant. right at the right fielder. So Baco stopped his momentum, got back in time. So you still have a runner on for now, Chase Grant, who's one for one with an RBI. A sacrifice fly his last at bat. So back to the top of the order now. Two good at bats from Chase Grant so far. A single, an RBI sack fly, and he has a stolen base. <laughs> First pitch to Grant, misses for a ball. And with a left-handed batter, that hole with the first baseman holding the runner has to be very tempting for Grant. But the way he swings the ball, I'm more looking him for him to drive something into the gap in the right center field area of the field. 1-0 pitch, swung on and bounced. To the left side, diving, stop it, short, flip to second one, relay to first is not in time. Unbelievable play by Natuzzi. Yeah, Natuzzi, <laughs> what he lacks in stature, makes for up for an athletic ability. We've seen him multiple times make Center great plays three. at shortstop. There again, he corrals that Chase Grant grounder and gets at least an out at second base. Another highlight defensive play that we've seen this game. I can count six now. <laughs> yeah, we have plenty of highlights to cut from this game. So here's Joey Dodson. Runner going. Throw down to second. And they got him. Great throw by Ian Acosta. And they even catch better, Chase Grant. Yeah, even better play by Nolan Burr to really put his foot down to block Chase Grant's sliding feet first from taking that stolen base. That'll end four innings of play here at Solano. Rockhound still lead it four to nothing. Welcome back. Fifth inning of play here at Solano. Mudcats still looking for a run. Solanpa on an 11 straight batters retired streak. Acosta, Meekum, and Cole are going to try and break that. Swinging a fly ball high in the air. Left center field. This one's deep. And it's going to hit the base of the wall. Picked up by Dotson. He'll throw it in. That is a long double for Ian Acosta that breaks the 11 straight retired streak. Yeah, and Acosta first pitch aggression lined that right in the gap and thought it had a chance maybe to get out, but nonetheless, Acosta put a charge in that one, gets the first extra base hit, only the second hit for the Mudcats, and they finally get Salampa back in the stretch for the first time since the top of the first. 
That will bring up Josh Meekum, grounded to second his first time up. First pitch he sees. He swings and bounces one to second. He gets the job done. Burrow will make the play, but he moves that runner up with only one out. Yeah, that's all he wanted to do. You can tell by the way he swung at that ball. Just wanted to poke it towards the second base side, advance Acosta into scoring position. Now there's a runner at third, less than two outs. Connor Cole, however, struck out his first time up, one of two that Salampa sent down. And this is definitely a strikeout situation for Salampa. First pitch, great breaking ball. It's a little bit high. Still great movement on that pitch. Yeah, that's deceptive because it, the way the catcher catches it, it looks like it's in the strike zone, but when it crosses the plate, it's high. Fastball for a strike right afterwards, one and one. Good job changing speeds on Cole, making sure he stays off balance, not being able to predict fastball or breaking ball. Swing in a chop foul, one and two. That's how he backed up that curveball with two fastballs. We'll see what he does one, two. I would think maybe something low in the dirt. Make him try and chase something. Got to have trust in your catcher to block that, though, with the runner at third. One, two pitch. And he does have faith in his catcher who makes the block. Two I and two. I think that's just the baseball play all around. Trying to make the batter fish. He stays patient, and your catcher... Makes a crucial block with a runner at third and one out. And now Salonpa is set 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him! Called strike three. Salonpa asks Connor Cole, can I help you? He says, nah, just looking. <laughs> that That'll bring up the number nine hitter, Brendan Natuzzi. With a runner on third and two outs. He's been great in the field for the Mudcats. The shortstop has made a lot of good plays. First pitch misses for a ball. We'll see what he can do with the bat. He was his first at bat. He grounded back swing to the and a bouncer just over the pitcher coming in from third, and the ball is dropped at first by Fag. Not sure if they had beat him anyway, but Pridey came all the way in in front of Webster. Yeah, that was a tough play. It was just a high chopper. You expect that from a speedy guy like Natuzzi to just try and beat something out on the infield. And that high chopper was just too high for Pridey to gather, transfer to his throwing hand, and throw him out. But he made a, a close play. And if I catches that ball, perhaps Natuzzi is out. He very nearly did the exact same thing he did in the first time with chopping it back to the mound. This one just over the pitcher Salonpo is nearly the same play. Yeah, his go-go gadget glove could not go that high. <laughs> he needs some hops to go with yeah. it. Yeah, you need the extended version, like the the go-go gadget glove 2000. Oh, one pitch misses for a ball, one and one. Back up is Nolan Burr, who is last plate appearance against Salonpo made a great play, stabbing at the ball. Swing and a miss. Runner way off the bag at first. The snap throw is not in time as it pulled Fag into a jump. Yeah, you definitely don't want to make the last out on a base running mistake. That's definitely the mental errors that get a manager frustrated with you. 1-2 pitch. Curveball swung and a shot to right. Grant will get over there and make the catch. That will end the top of the fifth. Finally, a run is scored by the Mudcats. Rockhounds remain ahead, 4-1. to one.
bottom of the fifth inning. Rockhounds Rock on top, Joey four Dotson. to one. It's going to be Dotson, Pridey, Pancras, two, three, four, for the Rockhounds to try and respond to the Mudcats, putting up their first run of the ball game in the top of the fifth. And Pearsall settled down a little bit since giving up four in the first two innings. First pitch way inside on Dotsie. Pearsall has nearly hit just about everyone who's thrown that breaking ball too. Yeah, it's a deceptive breaking ball. Luckily, it has a little late life, and it dodges out of the way of the hitter. 1-0 pitch, and you see him really shaking his hand every time he throws it. You almost wonder if it's putting stress on his arm. Yeah, maybe he's just not feeling the control today. Breaking balls can be temperamental. 1-1 one and one now on Dodson. Swinging a high pop-up over towards second. And making the catch in shallow right field is Nolan Burr. So Dotson 0 for 2 with a walk. They'll bring up Jack Pridey, who's 0 for 2. Third base number 11, Jack Pridey. So Jack Pridey now with the ground into a force and a fly out. He did steal a base after grounding into that force in the first. First pitch from Pierzall. Bounces in. Nice block. Not that it matters with no one on base, yeah. but worth noting Acosta staying in front of it, the experienced catcher. Yeah, you just As a catcher, you just take pride in blocking everything. The minute you let a ball in the dirt go by as a catcher, that's when things start becoming shaky. Another nice block in the dirt, 2-0. and So Pearsall's last inning was the least stressful. Only three batters technically came up, but he walked one. Checked his swing. He did not go. He walked. Oh, he did go. There was no call until he finally signals for help, and the first base umpire says, yes, he did. Good thing there's two umpires then. Two and one now. Really didn't look like he went around. Yeah, it doesn't change the at-bat too drastically. I mean, three out of two, one, you're still ahead in the count. Two, one pitch makes it three and one, and now it really doesn't matter that much. Yeah. I mean, the, the only difference is he'd be walking to first right now instead of being in a good hitter's count. And with the power of Pridey, maybe he likes being in the batter's box with a three, one count. Get it something good to hit here. Three, one pitch. And he takes the walk anyway. So no harm, no foul. Just an extra pitch on the arm of Pearsall. That'll bring up Hank Pankratz. Sacrifice fly his first time up. Flew out to center his second time up. And that fly out to center was that amazing play by Wise. Who slid in with a backhand after Pankratz just kind of poked it into left center. Pitch missing for a ball. Pearsall definitely looking for his first double play. Try to get out of this inning. One-zero pitch. Runner starts to go and then holds. Acosta gives him a stare down. Checks the runner at first. And he steps off. Yeah, they're playing Pankratz in a little bit on the third base side with Cole playing in on the dirt. But the double play combo of Natuzzi and the second baseman. Swinging a high pop up. Shallow center. Wise comes in on it and makes the catch. Two outs. That'll bring up Garland Webster. Bring up shortstop number 13, Garland Webster. Flew out to center and then he singled and reached second on a balk and then reached third on a balk. Unable to score. Look for Webster to potentially be aggressive here on the first pitch. 
First pitch misses outside. Yeah, maybe Pearsall isn't the pitcher to be aggressive against since he's had trouble locating all game long. Here in the bottom of the fifth. And there's a pitch or a throw over to first, not in time. One zero pitch, way inside. Runner going. Throw down to second is dropped by Burr. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have got him anyway, but would have had a chance. Yeah, that was a tough play all around. That was another one of those breaking balls that nearly hit Webster. Acosta tried to make the best of it, and he ma actually made a strong throw. Burr tried to kind of make a swipe tag to get the runner pridey, but unable to field it. So 2-0 and now, runner in scoring position for Webster. Great hitter's count now, it's 3-0. and And we'll see if he gets the green light from his skipper, Andrew Ayers. And the 3-0, swung on, line to left. This is going to drop, fair ball, extra bases for Garland Webster. One run in. Webster on his way to second. He's going to stop there with a stand-up two-out double. And the Rockhounds are in business here in the fifth inning. It's 5-1. Like I said, give Carl Webster a 3-0 green light, and he pays off with a huge extra base hit to drive in a run. You give up a run in the top of the inning, you make it up right back with that Carl Webster double. The moon's not out, but the entire team is howling. Not sure why. What, what's your hypothesis on the howling? Either A, they think that Rockhounds are the, the type of dog that howls at the moon, <laughs> or B, Garland got some sort of nickname that has to do with wolves. Is he like a beast? Werewolf? Werewolf. Oh, one pitch. Swung on and shot right at the right fielder. Easy play, barely having to move is Nick Perez. That'll end the fifth inning. Hounds on top 5-1. I'm Hunter Snyder. Thanks for watching Solano College Sports Network. And we're back. Top of the sixth, Jackson Gentis is on the mound now for the Rockhounds. Kellen Salonpa's game is over. Phenomenal stat line, though. He goes for five innings, surrenders just one run on only three hits. Gentis in three appearances, five innings pitched, five hits allowed, two runs, one earned, two walks, two strikeouts. Three strikeouts and one runner, or one batter rather, hit by a pitch also for Salonpa today. So it'll be Wise, Driscoll, and Lane, the two, three, four hitters for the Mudcats. Nice tight shot. Leading off the top of the six for the Mudcats. Center fielder number 21, Marcus Weiss. They definitely have to be happy to see another pitcher out on the mound besides Salonpa. Wise with the ground into a force out and a fly out. First pitch from Get Gentis is low for a ball. 
Why so far 0 for 2? Reached on a fielder's choice, but was stranded at third. Swinging a shot to second. Picked up on one hop and thrown to first by Pankratz. Heck of a play by Hank Pankratz. Yeah, that w one hop. That's a tricky. We've seen the infield be very temperamental here today, and Pankratz did a great job of settling under that hard hit ball right at him. Gave a little one hop to Jed Fag at first, but. Yeah, nice pick at first base by Fag as well, but that was an absolute bullet hit right at Hank Pankratz. Strike one on Michael Driscoll, or ball one rather, on Michael Driscoll. Takes a pitch inside, ball two. Driscoll is one for two. Singled, flew out to right. 2-0 pitch, swung on and popped up. Way up on the infield. Ball called off by Pankratz, and he makes the play. So Gentis right on cue with Salampa. And continuing the momentum of this strong pitching from the Rockhounds. First baseman, number 14, Jaden Lane. So that will bring up Jaden Lane, the first baseman, struck out and popped out. Two quick outs from Gentis. First pitch in there for a strike. A one pitch, swung on and flied right at the right fielder. Easy play for Chase Grant and a very quick inning for Gentis in relief. That'll end the top of the sixth. Hounds on top five to one. Hi, I'm Kellen Salampa. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. <laughs>Bottom of the sixth inning here for the Hounds on top. 5-1 over the Mudcats. Great relief inning from Jackson Gentis, who came out and very quickly retired three hitters. Lots of struggles from the Mudcats so far on offense. Just three hits through six innings, only one run. Yeah, and if they can continue pitching like this, we definitely have to not count the chickens before they hatch. We've seen bullpen trouble in the games we covered before. But you have to like the dominance that not only the starter Salanfa has had, but Gentis right after him. Keeping the momentum, one, two, three. Get that offense back up. And, hey, maybe the offense can get you some extra runs to get you some extra run support and make this game out of reach. So it'll be the bottom of the order. Gregory, Baco, and Facenda. And in most situations, this is where the pitcher thinks, all right, let's relax, let's throw strikes. But... You look at the uh, the bottom of the lineup today for the Rockhounds, and they have been the best hitters in the game so far. Gregory swings and misses. He's reached base on a hit-by-pitch and struck out. Went to second on a wild pitch. Ended up scoring a run. So technically 0 for 1 with the run scored. 0-1. Swung on and laced to right, and the play is made by Nick Perez. We've seen a lot of line drives right at players, especially in right field. Both right fielders have seen several fly balls and line drives hit right at them. It's interesting considering how many right-handed batters there are. And so it just tells me that both teams have a similar discipline of taking the pitch and driving it to where it's located. There's a lot, a lot of outside fastballs from both pitchers, and they're just trying to poke it to right field. And both right fielders, Perez and Grant, have got a lot of work. 
Dustin Baca, one of only two hitters in this game to have reached base multiple times, himself and Garland Webster. RBI single and a walk. Okay. Swing and a foul ball. And Webster is two for three because he made a fly out as well. So Baca comes up right now as the only hitter in the game that has not made an out. So one and one to the catcher. And the pitch swung on and missed. One and two. This is the first time Baco has had two strikes on him and fallen behind in the count. One two pitch. High two and two. Wouldn't be in a bat from Pearsall if the batter didn't have to have a pitch to, to think about. 2-2 two, two pitch. Way inside. 3-2. and two. And so after jumping ahead, 1-2. and two, two easy takes from Baco. And all of a sudden, it's a full count again. Pearsall still really struggling with the location on his breaking ball. And that's why the bullpen for the Mudcats is active with Trevor Steele, the pitcher out of Napa. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and high fly ball. Deep into center. This is not going to get out. Caught in left by Michael Driscoll. Just got that one up a little too much. Yeah, it was pretty. It was, uh, it was a high fly ball, but uh, not enough juice under that one. So easy play. We, we talked about all the fielder right fielder center. love. Finally, a left fielder gets a play to make. Yeah, that's the on only the second ball hit out to Driscoll in left. The first one was the... Sacrifice fly in the top of the second. That shallow fly ball hit by Chase Grant. Evan Facenda now takes the first pitch for a ball. It's 1-0. Oh. RBI with a triple his first time up, and then he hit a hard line drive to right. 1-0 oh pitch. High. 2-0. Oh. It's a good hitter's count for Facenda. That triple was his first extra base hit of the summer. He had... Ten hits coming in, all singles. Got to feel good to pick up that RBI. 2-0 pitch. Ball, 3-0. and Chase Grant is on deck. You got, have to wonder how much longer does Pearsall have. 3-0 pitch. Way inside, and it hit him. Third hit batter of the ball game. Second by Pearsall. So he'd been flirting with it for a while with the breaking stuff, and finally the top of the order. that fastball the was two. too far Chase inside Grant. of Facenda. Just took it. So to bring up Chase Grant, single hit by pitch, or single sack fly, rather. Stolen base, ground into a force out, but he was caught stealing to end the fourth inning. That's a good shot right there, so one for two, officially, for the lefty out of Palomar. First pitch, strike, 0-1. Oh Grant definitely takes some healthy rips while he's in the box. Very dangerous hitter with two outs. 0-1 oh pitch, Facenda breaks. And the ball drops in there. Nice block by Acosta, but no chance of getting up and throwing. Yeah, that ball in the dirt, no chance for Acosta to get. Facenda, who got a pretty good jump off the righty. So, game of... We saw Facenda's speed scoring on the sack fly from third base, and now we see a stolen base from Facenda. Already five stealing attempts from the Rockhounds have been successful on four. Popped up foul, one and two. So again, runner in scoring position, trying to put some insurance runs on the board. Take the pressure off the bullpen a little bit. And if your peers all, all you have to do is focus on this next pitch. Don't worry about the runner. Two strikes and two outs. He steps off. Got to be careful right there. He's already balked twice. That's definitely a good point. Checks the runner, 1-2. Way up there, 2-2. Two two. He's really focused on that runner right now. And good job by Facenda of taking a healthy lead and 
having him focus too much on that after the stolen base. But if you're Pierzal, you just need one more strike, one more good pitch to get out of this inning. And if you're Grant, you can't let Pierzal disrupt your rhythm in the batter's box. 2-2. Two -two. In there, called strike three. Pierzal takes Grant down. That'll end the sixth inning. After six, it's Rockhounds five, Mudcats one. Andrew Ayers, Rockhounds manager. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. First pitch from Gentis is in there for a strike. So the Rockhounds went to the bullpen. We will go to the bullpen too. Tristan Vector had to leave and taking his place is Anthony Williams, lead camera guy. <laughs> you know, always coming in in the clutch <laughs> to help the team out. Trying to finish this game. You, you had the best view of, of the game so far through, th through the ladder behind home play. What do you think so far of this ball game? Well, it's really quick. Both teams have done an excellent job pitching. We've had plenty of one, two, three out innings. They're both doing a good job. The Rockhounds have just been putting up more points. 2-1 pitch in there for strike two. Evens up the count. And that's the camera guy's best friend, right? Uh, one, two, three inning, especially on a hot day like this. Yeah, it's a very hot day. And the pitching for the Rockhounds has been solid. 2-2 two, two breaking ball is chopped foul. From Nick Perez, who's 0 for 2, ground out to the shortstop and flew out to right his previous two at-bats. Yes, I love how the pitcher is attacking the strike zone instead of trying to make the batter chase every pitch. So we'll see if he can't get it out here on the 2-2 pitch. That one is back up the middle, right to Garland Webster. Tricky hop, he boots it, tries to gun out Perez, but not in time. That was a tricky hop. And Perez reaches. Yes, the tricky hop definitely got Garland on that one. But he recovered and tried to get the out at Number first. 10, Ian Acosta. Yeah, just handcuffed him a little bit at the point of trying to field the ball and made a valiant attempt, but Perez was just too fast. So that will bring up Ian Acosta, who doubled in the gap on the first pitch he saw from Kellen Salampa, getting the second of the three hits Salampa allowed in his five innings of work. One for two for the catcher. Fouled off, 0-1. There have been a lot of foul balls in this whole game. What's it like to work the camera and then see a foul ball come kind of near you? Does, does your heart skip a beat a little bit? Well, for me, yes, especially <laughs> when the ball comes backwards and it's like you don't have enough time to react. But for the two side cameras, it's like you have time to react. That pitch is high, 1-1. One one. And if you see on your screen there towards the left, on the left side banner, you see a ladder. That's where Anthony has been perched up for how many innings have you worked? Four or five innings? Uh, about five. 1-1 one, one pitch. Acosta chopped to the third baseman. Gets over to second for one in the dirt. Nice pick, but they're going to call him safe. Jed Fack could not pick that ball in the dirt. So go down as a fielder's choice for Acosta. Yes, even though Fack couldn't get the – Get the ball on that one. It was definitely a great play. I tried to turn the 5-4-3 Pridey over to Pancras, and Pancras throw was a little low. And we've seen Jed Fag play predominantly at third base, so maybe first base, not his natural position. But one out. The first pitch is skied high by Josh Meekum. Right fielder Chase Grant is underneath it for out number two. I would hate to play in the outfield, especially when the sun is beaming down on you. Like, how can you see the ball? Yeah, I think you see the communication between center fielder Joey Dotson and Chase Grant have a little laugh there because uh, they got pretty close to each other, and you have to communicate when 
the ball's kind of in between you two, uh, the two defenders. That ball's chopped right up the middle. Garland Webster with the play. Steps on second base for the third and final out of the top of the seventh inning. So no runs come across, even though Nick Perez led off the inning with a single. So we'll go to the seventh inning stretch. Bottom of the seventh. Rockhounds lead 5-1. to one. So a pitching change for the Mudcats. Trevor Steele, the pitcher out of Napa. At Napa, he accumulated a 0-0 zero zero record, 6.82 ERA, and 31 and two-thirds innings pitch. Gave up 45 hits and 19 walks. So he's coming in relief of the starting pitcher, Tyler Pearsall, who ends his line with five earned runs in six innings. Dotson. Nice play by the third baseman, Cole. Guns out the speedy Joey Dotson. So Connor Cole playing in on the grass. He made a nice diving play. Yes, nice diving play by Cole because if that one would have got past him, it would definitely been a, a double, especially with Joey's speed. Yeah, Joey would have taken second base easy. Uh, it's kind of like a mirror image of what Evan Facenda did on the, the first base side, but Cole able to make that diving grab. So that'll bring up Jack Pridey, the third place hitter. Takes a first pitch strike. Pridey 0 for 2, reached on a fielder's choice, flew out to right field, and walked and scored his last time up. Well, let's see if he can score again, Brian. That one's in the dirt. Evens the count 1 to 1. Pridey has four home runs this summer, and that's definitely the type of power that Falcon fans like to see from their returning third baseman. That one is laced into center field. Wise goes back. He's still traveling back. Cannot make the play, and it bounces off the top of the wall. Pride is on his horse and running and going to make it into third base easily for a stand-up triple. Yeah, speaking of power, and he just hit a triple. Yeah, why, even the speedy Wise, we've seen him make great plays in center field and on the base paths, but even with his speed, Pride hit it too well and hit it over his head. Hank and Pankratz. he was able to take third base standing up. So that will bring up Hank Pankratz, who is 0 for 2. Drove in a run on a sack fly in the first inning. Flew out to center field, his other two at bat. So 0 for 2. First pitch in the dirt. Nice block by Acosta. Ball one. And the defense is playing in, trying to protect that run. But in a similar situation in the first, Pankratz hit it to right field pretty deep. It allowed the runner to score pretty easily. See if Pankratz can't do it again. He laces it foul. Evens the count one and one. Yeah, and since the defense is playing in, that leaves a wide open spot right in between the middle and the, the middle of the field where the third baseman outfitters are. Let's just hope uh, Steele doesn't have the athletic ability that Kellen Salampa had <laughs> earlier in the game. And that breaking ball's in the dirt. That actually hits Pankratz. So Pankratz will make his way down to first. And maybe not the worst thing if you're steel. Now you have a runner at first and sets up a double play possibility. With one out, that brings up shortstop number 13, Garland Webster. So Pankratz stays 0 for 2, has reached now on the hit by pitch. That'll bring up Garland Webster. 2 for 3 with a single and a double. Let's see if Webster can. Get a hit deep so Pankratz could reach second 
and possibly getting scoring position. And so they're going to play the third baseman, Cole, kind of close to the bag and in. Middle infielder is at double play depth. First pitch to Webster is laced in to right field for a single. Pancras will hold up a second. Pratty crosses home and scores. So Webster drives in his second run, and now the Rockhounds lead 6-1. to one. Yeah, it's a nice hit by Webster. Getting Pencrest to second. Now he could possibly score. Single right brings in the run. And, and that brings up first base. And maybe they three. could put up more points Fag. on the board. We'll see if Jedediah Fag can't continue the momentum. Runners at first and second. One out. Steal with a pitch. Low for ball one. Fag is 0 for 2 with a walk. Walked in the third inning. Was stranded at second base. Steele looks at the runner at second. Comes home. That one is laced high into left field. We'll see if he can't ha handle it. And he does. Michael Driscoll. Pankratz tags and advances to third base on the play, though. So good speed there from the second baseman to tag on that play from Driscoll. Yeah, by the time I seen him, he was already reaching third. <laughs> I didn't even know he took off. Yeah, I was I was writing down uh, F7 <laughs> in my book, and by the time I look up, I see Pancras <laughs> kind of settling into third base. I was like, whoa, got some speed there. So now two outs, Cody Gregory, the DH, 0 for 2 officially, reached on a hit-by-pitch in the second inning and scored, struck out. Actually, Kirby Broadbent is pinch hitting for Cody Gregory. Cody and Cody. <laughs> Cody and Kirby. So the big first baseman, pinch hitting for the DH. So no defensive substitutions. So 0 and 1 is the count to Broadbent, who was 12 for 43 during the summer. That 0-1 pitch is just outside, 1-1. Broadbent has three doubles, two home runs, and 12 RBIs, so some power off the bench here for the Rockhounds. 1-1. That one's outside. Good play by Acosta to catch that ball. Make sure it doesn't go to the backstop. So Broadbent gets back in the box. Steele looks in, gets a sign from Acosta. Comes set. 2-1 pitch to Kirby Broadbent. That one is skied high in a center field. Wise is underneath it. He'll put it away for out number three, but not before a run comes across for the Rockhounds. They extend their lead 6-1. Nine, one, two hitters here in the top of the eighth. Shortstop number three, Brendan Natuzzi. Brendan Natuzzi, one for two. Grounded out to the pitcher, Salampa, in the third. Kind of mentioned his great defensive play earlier was Steele. As Gentis with the first pitch strike in there. Singled in the fifth inning. So Gentis in his third inning of work so far. Two innings, only giving up one hit. That pitch is way high. And outside, one on one. 
Yes, I love how the pitchers for the Rockhounds are, uh, they're still attacking the strike zone. Throughout the game, they've been attacking the strike zone, causing the, the Mudcats to pop flies and grind out all game. Yeah, let the defense work for you by staying in the strike zone. 2-1 is chopped up the middle again. Robbed by the pitcher. Underhand scoop. So the second time, Brendan Natuzzi has grounded out to the pitcher. So one for three for the shortstop. That will bring up Nolan Burr. Actually, it looks like a pinch hitter. Jared Fetick. First pitch and stabbed at, bunt attempt, and missed for a strike by Jared Vitug out of UC San Diego. That one is foul. 0 oh 2, quickly to Vitug. And v when Vitek kind of walked up to the batter's box as that curveball is outside, one and two. Thought, wow, did Nolan Burr shrink during the game? Because <laughs> Vitek is quite short in stature. Hey, it happens. It's hot. <laughs> when he gets dehydrated, he just kind of shrinks down in his uniform. <laughs> two and two. <laughs> Is looked at for a ball three and two now, and that's the tough part about stra staying in the strike zone. He managed to do it to Natuzzi, who is also short from the right side. Those smaller guys have smaller strike zones. As he takes a ball for a walk, so he was up 0 and two, and four straight balls led to a walk now for Jared Vitug. Yeah, that's why I couldn't play baseball because my strike zone would be very humongous. <laughs> So that will bring Marcus Wise up. 0 for 3, reached on a fielder's choice. Advanced to third on a Driscoll hit. Flew out to right and grounded out to second. That first pitch is very high from Gentis. Ball one as the Rockhound bullpen is active. We'll find out soon, potentially, who is in the bullpen. That pitch is fouled off by Wise. Yeah, I'm surprised um, we're not seeing Wagner in the bullpen right now. And yeah, we have a good look at Wagner sitting down on the bench side next to starter Kellen Salampa, who pitched five excellent innings. Second pitch is fouled. 1 2. So now he's ahead of the count now. One and two to Wise. Yeah, the Wise has definitely had a big game. Chopper to Webster, double play ball potentially to Pankratz for one, and a good hard slide from Vitug to break up that double play. But they managed to get one. Wise reaches again on a fielder's choice for the second time. Yeah. Yeah, Pankratz definitely couldn't get out the way in time to try to cause the double play. But at least they got one out. It's like the world's tiniest boulder <laughs> coming down on you. You have to jump out of the way. It's like a VW bug in a car crash. <laughs> and that first pitch is laced into shallow uh, right field. And Pancras makes a great over-the-head play to make the third and final out. So the Rockhounds lead 6-1 and will go to the bottom of the eighth.
So new pitcher for the Solano Mudcats is Johnny Benedict. He's a pitcher and an infielder from Laney College. Wasn't able to find stats on him in his high school career or his college career. So a bit of a mystery pitcher here, but one thing is, is he's a big boy. Yeah, yeah he's kind of built like my uncle. My uncle looks exactly like that, but he's 6'8", about three. 370 or 380, I, I believe. But yeah, and he used to be a pitcher, so <laughs> from what I've heard, he, he was a good pitcher, so maybe we're about to see a good performance yeah, today, too. Yeah. Catcher number 14, Pitchers don't Thomas have to Blanco. have the most, they don't have to have one type of build. Like you look at David Wells, who's a little portly pitcher and <laughs> pitched very well. We'll see how, what Dawson Baco can do here at the eighth. That one's in the dirt. Ball one. One zero is in the dirt again. So Benedict not in the strike zone. First two pitches. Yeah, maybe he's still warming up. And you only get a certain amount of warm up pitches, and we we hadn't seen him in the bullpen warming up. So those warm up pitches were the only pitches he got, and that two zero pitch was in there and swung on and missed for strike one. To Dawson Baco, who's had a good game, one for two, with a walk in his three plate appearances. That one is skied to center. Wise and the second baseman, Vitug. And Wise, another sliding play. Yes, Wise has been busy in center field today. He must be an in infielder as well, because he sure does love to slide. <laughs> Brings up left fielder. Hey, he seven. loves making Number highlight seven. plays. <laughs> And so that'll bring up Evan Facenda, who has reached twice in three plate appearances, tripled home, Dawson Baco. That one is laced to the right side. Fielded by Vitug, knocks it down, but Facenda beats it out. So another hit for Evan Facenda, and he shows off his wheels yet again. He stole a base when he got hit by a pitch his last plate appearance in the sixth. There he beats out a single, and he hits a triple and scores on a sack fly in the first. So here's a replay, Vitug, and it's safe. So Facenda beat out the throw from Vitug. Yeah, I didn't know Facenda could run like that. He's definitely showing me something different this game. And that first pitch is fouled off. We'll see if it stays in play for the third baseman. It does not. Chase Grant. So Benedict asks 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 for another ball. <laughs> they get a good look at Benedict. Come set. Pitch to Grant is laced to center. Wise is underneath it again. So the second out. I wonder how many yards Wise has ran this whole game. <laughs> yeah, he won't have to do cardio for his workout. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to calculate all the yards he ran. Yeah, I wonder how much that stat tool for soccer players, because I know when soccer players get substituted, they have, like, yards run after yeah. they come, or, or miles run. Wise has definitely picked up a lot of mileage <laughs> as Dodson fouls off the first pitch. Or, or we could get him a Fitbit. Hey. Yeah, just count his steps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not counting his steps. Maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> and so the pitcher warming up for the Rockhounds is Kirby Broadbent, who was the DH. And the great thing about having your DH pitch is that you lose your DH, but since he's your pitcher, you don't actually lose anything. Dotson, sharp to Natuzzi. Nice stab. Gets the speedy Dodson, so a great play again from the shortstop, Brendan Natuzzi, to get the third out of the inning. So we'll head to the top of the ninth. Rockhounds lead 6-1.
So four, five, six. Last chance for the Mudcats to crawl back in this ball game and try and have a five-run comeback here in the top of the ninth. Jaden Lee, Nick Perez, Ian Acosta do up. Jackson Gentis looking for the save opportunity in this fourth inning of work. That first pitch is a ball. Now, save situations usually are if you're down by three and your closer comes in, you get a save. As next pitch is fouled off, one and one. But here in this situation, when a reliever comes in, pitches the last four innings after a, a pitcher, starting pitcher pitches five, they actually get the save. So Gentis has a unique opportunity to get a four inning save. As this one is flied into left field, Doss is actually underneath it, calls off Facenda. And again, good communication from the outfielders. Gets out number one. Yeah, and I think it's a good idea to leave the pitcher in because he's hot right now. Why? Why not Brings just leave him in? Why take him Nick out? Perez. Yeah, you're up by five. Even if you get a grand slam here in the top of the ninth, you're still leading by one. <laughs> so you have a little leeway here with Gentis. As Nick Perez is in the box, looks at ball one. Perez, one for three, singled on his last at bat, grounded out to short and f fly out to right. Swung on and miss. Hard cut there from Perez, one and one. Yeah, he's definitely feeling himself today. <laughs> we apologize, too, for the scoreboard issues we've been having. Mudcats obviously have one run, as that one is swung on and missed. So the score is six to one here in the top of the ninth. Gent is ahead in the count one and two. That one is laced into right field. That's going to get down in fair territory. Grant cuts it off. Strong throw to the cutoff man will hold Perez to a long single. So good job by Grant getting over there to gather the ball and plenty of time to hold Perez only to a single. Yeah, the batter had to kind of golf swing that one. I didn't think he was going to get to it. Yeah, he brought out the three iron and <laughs> golfed that one into right field. Which will bring up Ian Acosta, who's one for three as well. Doubled and scored the only run for the Mudcats in the fifth inning. Acosta looks at a pitch high for ball one. Acosta gets back in the box. Gent is set. Takes. A strike, even as the count, one and one. One out, 6-1 ball game. Nick Perez standing at first base. Jackson Gentis, three and a third innings out of the bullpen. He's throwing the low pitches because you know he wants his double play. He wants to end it right now. And that ball is fouled straight back. And when you foul straight back, you get a little <laughs> signal from our screen. As there you see, our name is Brian Nelson alongside Anthony Williams filling in for Tristan Vector. One and two is the count to Acosta. And he hits it to Webster, and he takes a bad bounce. Throws out Acosta, though. Good composure there from the shortstop. It came up, and it looked like it actually hit him in the face. And he managed to get the ball and made a strong throw to get the catcher Acosta. So fielder's Good choice will advance Number Perez to second, but you have two outs now. Yeah, it took a, a awkward bounce and just popped up and hit him in the face. And But he, at least he got one out. That's all that matters. Yeah, and now you only need one more to finish this ball game off as Gentis gets Meekum to check swing for a strike. Yeah, maybe he could redeem himself and get like a, a diving catch and – Throw it to first base <laughs> on a turnaround. Something real special. Meekum swings and misses 0-2. Oh Not great swings for Meekum. Doesn't look like he's picking up Gentis very well. And well, nobody has. 0-2 oh taken for strike three, and that is the ball game, folks. So the Rally Factory Rockhounds will win this ball game 6-1 to one over the Solano Mudcats. Anthony, what are your final thoughts on this game? Well, like I said earlier, the Rockhounds, they just kept attacking the, pitch, the strike zone all game. And as a result, you've seen 
the the muck has just hit grounders and pop flies the whole time. They couldn't really attack the pitchers like they wanted to. And then the Rockhounds, they just got to an early lead and kept it with their great pitching and defense. So good job by the Rockhounds. Yeah, Rockhounds got out to an early 4 nothing lead and their pitching. They kept that and that's all they needed. Our player of the game will be Kellen Salampa. For Anthony Williams and Brian Nelson, we'd like to thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. So now for an interview with Kellen Salampa, here is our interview with our best bar player of the game. Hey everybody, it's Alexis Rojas and I'm here with Kellen Salampa, the Best Buy player of the game. Now Kellen, what have you guys learned from previous games that you were able to incorporate for this game? Uh, well, you know, with the Mudcats, they're not, you know, you face like the Puff Caps and they got a lot of Division One guys and guys that are real studs. So uh, not to take away anything from the Mudcats, but just got to go right at them and not make mistakes and uh, get a victory. And what did you guys think you did really well this game? Uh, well, we took we took what uh, Tyler Pearsall gave us. Uh, he's a good guy. He had a little, uh, little trouble getting in the zone. Uh, so just getting guys on base and taking advantage of that. And then uh, for me, just really going after them and uh, letting them swing it and letting them get themselves out. Is there anything you guys can work on for future games? Uh, today was a pretty clean day. I think we had a few uh, few mishaps in the, uh, in the uh, infield. But um, other than that, pretty clean, I think. Cool. And that's it, everybody. My name is Alexis Rojas. Thank you for supporting Solano College Sports Network. The Rockhounds took it today 6-1. to one.